welcome back to the Warframe Beginner's Guide to the Galaxy. I am the Gamer Under Development, and we are picking up exactly where we left off. We did a deep dive on Cetus on the last episode. On this episode, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to skip the uh, videos and some of the cinematics for this, because I want you guys to be able to experience it yourself. But we're going to be trying to do the Deadlock Protocol. Now, this is a very low MR account. This is an MR5 account. So we're going to be seeing if the deadlock protocol is actually approachable and completable at that low MR without a huge, huge amount of mods and things like that. And the reason why is because if we can complete this, we can get the Zorus. If we can get the Zorus, we can farm some of the new weapons. And the new gunblade, I can't remember the name of it exactly. The new gunblade is the Strofa. That's right. So the Strofa is actually one of the best Gunblade melee weapons in the game. So if we can get that early on, that can actually help carry us through a lot of the content. So we're going to make a point of getting that. Now what's important about that is that the blueprint for it actually drops off of the Jackal. So we're going to go try the new Jackal out as well. Uh, this should be a very, very interesting mission go going after that Jackal. Because from my understanding, he is a lot harder now. Uh, where is he though? Isn't he on Forid? No, that's an infested assassination. There we go. It's that one. Okay. They changed the interface on all this. I, I honestly haven't been playing that much, folks, because I had some real life stuff kind of pulling me away. But we're going to go try the Jackal out. This is the new upgraded Jackal. Chances are we'll have somebody very high level with us, so it won't be too much of a challenge. I might go in in solo mode after this and see how that plays. Uh, but I do know that the mechanics have been updated quite a bit, and he can be an absolute monster to tackle. This is also the new Corpus tile set, so you'll see cool things like this, which you'll be able to offer Granum Crowns to, which is something we'll cover later on today. Because part of getting the pieces for the Strofa is going to be going into the Granum Void and doing those missions. Hello there, enemies. Wow, when you have such bad aim, you miss with one shotgun blast that would have leveled it. Okay, so we're just going to keep moving through. The Jackal's at the very end here. We don't need to mess around. Come on, straight through. <laughs> that was actually really nice. I love when you, like, flip through stuff organically like that. Okay, here we go. So this is the new Jackal fight. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. My experience with it so far was that it just was not very... Uh, comparable to the old experience. Let's put it that way. This doesn't even remotely compare to what it used to be like to do the Jackal. The Jackal has way more mechanics now. Uh, he does way more damage. From a lot of people's perspective, he's been able to kill companions and things a lot easier this this build, and honestly, I'm not gonna say I'm, I'm thinking it's it's gonna go swell. We probably have some amazing team members though, like let's let's look, look at our team. Okay, so we've got an MR25 and an MR22, a Rhino Prime and Necros Prime, so I think we'll be okay, but it's definitely not going to be a walk in the park by any means. Okay, three out of four players, we need one more player. Here they come. This is such a cooler fight now. Like, I've only done this on my main account so far, and on my main account, I have access to something that people commonly refer to as spoiler mode, which actually, like, allows you to avoid a lot of the mechanics of the fight. This time, there are no avoiding mechanics. We just gotta go. Oh, so the stomp we recognize. We got up in the air out of that stomp. So these blue walls, they do damage if you walk through them, so you kind of have to keep pace with them. All right, at least that's what I'm assuming. I mean, you can also hide behind the pillars like everybody else is doing, but I always assume that keeping pace with them is what you're meant to do, since you can't hide behind the pillars after he destroys them. Not getting a much of a chance to even damage him here. Like, I'm not sure what they just did to damage him right there, but they wrecked him up. Uh, you do have to hit him with a execute attack to move between phases now. And there we go. I think we'll try this solo one time after this, just because I want to see what the mechanics are like for a new player. Because this will theoretically be the first boss that you fight. And it's one of those things where if I wonder... I wonder if they made it so hard that, like, new players are actually going to struggle on this without getting a group. That's kind of an important distinction from what it was before, because before, you could absolutely do Jackal alone, no problem. Oh, he turned, he turned. I gotta turn, too. Okay, so I gotta turn. You see somebody using spoiler mode right there to, to avoid his troubles. Okay, now he has these electrical cages up in his room that we have to avoid. Like, there's all sorts of new mechanics, guys. Alright, he's down. 
basically all we're doing is letting everybody else pound on him and we're just avoiding the walls. That's kind of okay. I should have realized that coming in with a group was a bad idea if we were trying to understand the mechanics. Wow, he just whacked somebody there, though. Okay, keep moving. Avoid the- ow. Did we get hit? No, we didn't get hit. Okay. We just gotta keep avoiding all these electrical- Oh, he just knocked me through the electrical wall. Okay. Iron skin, please. Uh, I think he's down now. Nope, they're already doing the melee execute, so on to the next phase, I suspect. Yeah, we're really not getting to see the mechanics here because of the amount of damage that's going out on the Jackal by our teammates. Alright, is this the last spin? He didn't have much health left. Oh, 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 ow, ow, no. Okay, so if you get hit by one of those, it also knocks you down, which seems a little... What the heck? Ow. Okay, okay. Keep moving. So we did survive all of that. That wasn't exactly the most graceful experience ever. And he's down. What do we get there? We got shell compression. We'll see what we get as a mission reward. We're really hoping for the Strofa blueprint. Maybe if we get the Strofa blueprint, we won't come back. He does he does seem quite a bit more difficult mechanically now. Uh, but I honestly feel like it just makes the fight take longer. I don't think that it adds that much depth as far as you being able to accomplish the mission or not. Okay, you're at the exit. We're ready to go, guys. Come on. Unless they're going to wait around and see if we get a coin carrier, which is entirely possible. I think they spawn in at about three minutes. Uh, so when you're in this new tile set, at about the three minute mark, usually a coin carrier, and I can't remember, I think they're called treasurers. They'll spawn in, and they have a ton of armor, and they're really hard to kill, but if you bring them down, you'll get a coin which you can use to go into the Granum Void, which you can use to get the other parts and things you need. So we got the Rhino Chassis Blueprint there, which wasn't what we were here for. That's okay. We're going to be coming back in just a moment. Um, I don't... It's weird, right? So let's, let's just do the Jackal and work on getting the Blueprint for the weapon first. And then after that, we'll see how much time we have left to go into the Deadlock Protocol. Because I do want to get into the Deadlock Protocol, but I also kind of want to see how this boss fight goes if you're solo. So I'm going to go in here and go solo. And we will see how this goes down. I'm not sure that Rhino is the best option, but I'm going to bring him anyway. I do think that he's powerful for this because if I had kept my Iron Skin up in that last fight, that last round through here, when he had done his knockdown that sent us through the wall, we wouldn't have actually gotten knocked down. So I think if you keep Iron Skin up and you're on Rhino, it's easy. Uh, I'll also come back through it with Volt. Obviously, my Volt will be a little bit higher rank than maybe a new player's Volt going through here. But to emulate that, we could also take a bunch of mods off, like... Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll come through with a Volt with just, like, one mod on. Uh, and maybe, like, a really basic weapon and just see how that goes. Because that's the real test, right? Is, like, new players are going to be coming through there. They're not going to have a ton of mods. They're not going to have a lot of the things that I already have access to on this account. And what we really want to do is emulate their experience to see what it's like for them. Because they're the ones that are going to need the most help with that kind of thing. Okay. Let's let's do that. I've jumped up on that thing before and walked through it and gotten killed by like the power just flowing through it So I was like eh, no got to veer away from there uh, Should be up here, All right? Oh No, I wish I had coins buddy if I had coins I would get you out. I'm not gonna leave you to be reaped, but I don't have any coins So if you get the granum coins you can use them to go into the granum void or you can save those uh, Solaris there if you do save the Solaris like that, you actually gain reputation with Solaris United, I believe. It might even be with Vox Solaris. I can't say for sure, though. I have not done that yet myself. All right, let's deploy it. Let's go. The big boy here. <laughs> I love that he comes up as a little boy. Not a little boy. Not a little boy at all, y'all. This is the big boy jackal. Okay, let's go. Uh, I'm gonna put iron skin on right away to keep us from going down. So I can't shoot the leg anymore. Looks like we have to shoot the core maybe? Or is it the back leg? So you can see that one of his health bars was vulnerable there, but I think it was the back leg, not the front leg. Which kind of makes more sense anyway. You would expect them to put armor on the front legs. I could see them maybe not thinking, oh, we need armor on the back legs, too. Oh, now it's telling me to use the Parazon. Okay, so 
Is it just time based? Because like we didn't do damage to him at all. He just kind of jumped up and did his little rotation thing. If it's time based, then this is gear independent and like it doesn't really matter what weapons and stuff you bring in. So, okay, I can see how this could be approachable by a new player. It's more a survive the mechanics fight now, I think, than it is a do the damage fight. Uh, either that or Taxon is just unloading on this thing. There we go. If we get behind him, we can hit his legs. And I think he sucks you in when he does this. So it tries to keep you close to the center because you don't have to, like, run as quickly to avoid it if you go close to the center like that. You do have to watch out for those wall switches where it starts turning the other direction. Like, that's actually a problem. Uh, and then you have to watch for when he slams you when he comes back down there. But otherwise, not so bad. Run in, do our execute here. Okay, this is definitely, like, this is just a much cooler fight, I think, for new players now. Like, I don't think that there's any issues with approachability at all. Because you basically just need to get behind him and shoot at his limbs now. Which makes sense. Like, there's armor on the front of them. There's not armor on the back of them, right? So I'm going to bullet jump past him here. Go straight for that leg. Okay, he's going to suck me in. I don't even know if it's damage dependent to trigger this. At this point, it feels more like it's just time, and I do apologize, guys, if I sound a little nasally today. My allergies have been off the hook lately. Uh, he's turning again. He's turning again. I see what you did there. Now, when it goes down, down, oh, we have to avoid that. And that's, like, the one thing I'm, I'm not getting very, very well right now is the avoiding of that. Don't have the energy right now to go ahead and put up my iron skin, so we're just going to stabby, stabby. I do think this would be just as easy if not easier with Volt, especially given that Volt gets his speed boost and stuff. Oh, ouch. Knock me right back through that wall again. Uh, the electrical procs trigger, and I'm down. Okay. Gonna res back up here. So far, with me not knowing what I'm doing at all, we've gone down one time. And I'm not sure how I'm doing damage to him. Honestly, Taxon is doing all the damage to him at this point, and it doesn't look like it takes much. And we're just kind of shooting at his limbs. I think you have to get behind the armor plating, shoot at his limbs, and then the real trick is you have to, oh, avoid these and the wall. Did you see how he, like, wedged us right against the wall here? That's actually really rough. Like, you have to really be careful about your pacing and your distance, because right there we're on that electrical wall. Uh, but because we were behind him that time, we didn't actually get knocked back, so that's another thing to kind of note. And there we go. That's it. Fight's done. Oh, and we got the Strofa Blueprint, just like that. That's how you do, folks. Oh, hello there. There's a lot of you guys. Uh, why don't we try this on? Oh, I don't have the energy. I was gonna stomp and then just take them all out, but it's not worth. Oh no, we're stuck. We gotta unlock. Please, please unlock quickly. I just wanna go home. Alright, cool, we're out. We're out. Let's go. Out the door we go. Oh my gosh. Oh, here he is, here he is. Come here, you. You're not getting away from me. Okay, he probably is. I'm being honest here, but uh, we're going to try anyway. Okay, I'm going to slash him up, see what we can get. You have to kill him within a certain amount of time or he will just get away. And I've had trouble killing him in the time limit before, so we're really going to have to push it here. Come on, get that damage, baby. Get it. There we go, he's down. Beautiful, what do we get? What? Did he not drop a coin? Oh, he didn't drop a coin because we haven't done the deadlock protocol yet. I forget, you have to actually have completed the protocol before you can get coins. Okay, well, it looks like they made him a lot easier because you didn't used to be able to bring him down like that just by wailing on him. You had to like, legitimately dump every bit of damage you had and then, you know, pray a little bit too, just, just a little bit. But here we go, we have the Strofa blueprint, everything looks to be in order. And all that is left now is for us to go ahead and do the quest so that we can get a weapon we'll need to be able to do the Granum Voids a little bit easier. So that's what we're going to be doing. Okay. So, let's see. One new inbox message. Your actions have consequences. Oh yes, they do. Okay. 
So the Jackal is dead, the Shadow Guy's after us, which we don't really care about, and we're actually gonna dive into the Deadlock Protocol now. I'm not gonna view the cinematic like I said, I'm just making sure I have the mission selected, and we're gonna see how achievable this mission is as a low-level player. I do think that for the sake of being able to complete this, we're probably better off bringing Volt, though, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna go and grab our Volt loadout here. This is our level 30 Volt. He's already geared up. He's already ready to go. I do think I'm going to switch the Boltor for the Heck, though, because I do think the Heck has enough damage right now to be usable. And I think we might swap our secondary weapon as well, because I believe... I'm not 100% sure, but I believe we should have a new secondary to work on. Did I not craft the AK Broncos? I was almost 100% sure that I'd already started crafting that. Oh, I think I ran into a money issue. Let's let's go find out if I'm right. Yeah, ran into a money issue. Okay, that's fine. Craft them up, let's go. I still have that money issue. Haha! -ha. So I guess we'll craft those up after. It's honestly not that big of a deal. I do not want to be solo for these, but it's going to make me solo anyway because it is a story mission. Uh, so there's not a whole lot that we can do about that. Where did it put it? There it goes. Okay, Deadlock Protocol, here we go. We are starting this off. Uh, it is a longer quest chain, so I don't know if we're gonna finish the entire thing today, but we should get far enough into it. The last part is really the hardest part, and I, I don't wanna spoil too much about that until we get there. Uh, okay, here we go. This is not a fun part of the mission. This is a, I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact terminology. God, I've, I haven't played in a, a few days, and it's almost like my entire brain wiped, guys. Legitimately just my entire brain wiped. Uh, so this is a control-the-point style mission. We do need to get to each of the points and lock them down. Now, the problem with that is that they are on slightly opposite sides of this little map here, and enemies will be spawning and attacking both, and we're doing this solo. Which isn't the end of the world, but it's, it's definitely not uh, what I would call... You know, slash and stab and shooty. The the stuff that is generally the funnest part of Warframe. Controlling points isn't too bad, though. We can use our speed boost to get around if we need to. Uh, that shouldn't be too bad. I, I honestly don't know why I just used my speed boost right here, but sure. I captured that point. Let's get back over here to the other point, see if we can make sure nobody's going after it. Because there is a very real chance that somebody is. Hello there. Wow, my aim today. My aim today. Nope. Get off that computer. No computers for you. Okay, we've got to regain control of this point here real quick. And then we'll run over to the other one. Do the same thing. Point's in conflict with who? Point's not in conflict anymore. If you're here, you're dead. Alright, cool. That clears the point. Here we go. 100%. Turn on the speed boost. Let's jet. Straight over here. Use our melee weapon to close distance a little bit faster there. And then... Boom, right onto the point, right onto the enemies. Let's kill them, clear the point off, and then just stand here for a sec to flip it back over. And basically, this is all we're going to be doing. We're just going to keep going side to side, controlling the point, leaving, controlling the point, leaving, controlling the point, leaving. Uh, and the main reason for that is because anytime you're doing these missions where you need to control a point and you're solo, you kind of have to. You have to jump back and forth like that if you want to be efficient and actually keep them from taking the points. So by killing that guy, we bought ourselves a little bit of time to come over here and prevent anyone from taking this point. So I'm going to drop down with my stab there, take a look. Seems pretty clear. Uh, hit the ceiling there, which actually lowered the overall height of my jump. Now here, we do need to be worried because it looks like there's another guy coming to try to take control. There is. Take him off there with two shots. Seems good. Cut this guy down. We still have control of both points. Now, the thing that's unfortunate about this is this is three rounds, so like it may seem like this is really easy right now, and it is, but it's going to get tougher as time goes on. The enemies will level slightly, uh, things like that. Oh, and there's Neff. Neff there to run that mouth. Okay, taking out all the enemies here. It is going to reset all the points, so we do have to capture them again. Next wave in three seconds. Capture, capture, capture. Let's go. Give me this point. All right. I hear enemies. I think they're over there, but I can't see any. So it may just be in my head. All right. This way we go. Straight across here. And grab this point real quick. And then we'll do exactly what we did last round, which is we will hit our speed boost. We'll bounce over to the other point and see if we can keep that one clear. 
as long as you can keep people off of the computer terminals, guys, this is actually really easy. If you don't keep people off the computer terminals, you can be standing on the point killing everyone you think you see, but if there is somebody on a computer terminal flipping the point over, it's not going to matter. So if you find yourself struggling with this, try to remember that you're not here to kill everyone. You're here to kill whoever is messing with that computer. And primarily that. Like, if there's nobody messing with the computer, you don't need to kill anyone. Okay, A is being flipped right now, which may be... That's going to happen before I get there more than likely, but we can try. Yeah, see? There he is on the computer. We killed him. We kept the point. That's what I'm talking about. I can kill this other guy afterwards, but if I don't kill the guy on the computer, then that would have flipped the point, and then we would have been playing from behind, so to speak. Uh, so we can honestly hang here and wait. Based on the amount of time it took us to get here, we know that we can get to point B in time if it does start to flip. So we're just going to wait. We're just going to kill enemies that spawn here, and we're going to wait until we start to see B being flipped, and then we'll run over there and kill whoever is on the computer. Now, the one risk of doing it that way is that if there's multiple enemies on computers and you're jetting over there at the last second, you probably won't kill both of them in time. However, in this case, it looks like this is going to be over real quick. Uh, B is flipping now, so we're going to run over to B. I'm going to do my slam attack to get down there quickly. Make sure, there we go. There we go, just like that, guys. Just like that. Keep it clean, keep it clear. And now we just have to kill the remaining enemies. This should be a walk in the park with Volt. Oh, I tried to kill him with the shotgun there while he was popped up in the air just for fun. But I did not get the shotgun shot off soon enough, it seems. Alright, let's take A here. Should flip over super quick. Wait. And flip. On to B we go. Well, that was different. I didn't expect to do the spin move there. I was expecting to slam the ground and get there faster. Uh, didn't happen, though. Here, though, we are going to flip this over. We're not going to just jet to A because somebody's attacking it. Because we need to get B first. That way we establish control over at least one tower. Now, here we go. This is what it's all about. Uh, you're done. Get wrecked. Is there somebody left? Can you just die off of my point, please? Okay, so now we're going to be flipping... Or we were going to be flipping A over, but here's another guy. This is what I mean. They do get more plentiful. They do get more, like, higher shields and things as the mission goes on. That's okay. We're still ahead on percentages. We are flipping A right now. B is under attack, so we need to get over there as quickly as we can. But that should be fast enough. There we go. Once you get control of these towers, if you can just hold the towers, this is an easy, easy mission. Uh, it can frustrate new players, though, trying to control two points at once, especially if you get caught up doing what I'm doing right here, which is coming to kill this guy that was shooting at you, even though he wasn't actually going after the point. Now, this guy is going after the point, so he's got to die. All right, going to launch him into the wall. Hello, friend. Yeah, we're going to kill both of those guys. It's funny because it feels like they're only really attacking one point each round. I don't know if that's by design or what, but they really aren't going after both points simultaneously very often. So it's actually been pretty easy to just defend these points. I like using melee weapons a lot, mainly because they give you that parry chance when enemies shoot at you, and that can actually basically provide you with additional tankiness. All right. Easy as pie. Whoa, okay. Not as easy as pie. That's a Bursa. Bursas are no no fun. None whatsoever. We're going to get out of there for a moment. Buy ourselves some space. And then come after that Osprey. Okay. Osprey's down. Can we leave now? Can we leave now? Come on. We get it, Neff. You like to run your... Oh my gosh. I wish you could skip these. Neff, we understand. You like to run your mouth. It's it's kind of your thing. We get it. Can we go now? <laughs> At least Utico's lines are always fun. The brass on this mucker. Okay, can I can I go now? Can I leave now? What what's up? There we go. All right. So we're out of the first mission. That wasn't too tough. Um, 
Obviously, that wasn't very gear intensive either, so I think you could do this very, very early on as a new player. And like I said, given how strong the Strofa seems to be, I don't recommend against that. I think it's actually a good idea as a new player to try to gather yourself different tools for different situations. And gun blades are extremely powerful for certain situations in game. Um, I use my Redeemer on my main account as a heavy attack build, which is something that I'd never done before I got the Redeemer. And what I mean by that is essentially you, instead of building around raising your combo count and your critical with your combo count with things like Blood Rush and stuff like that, you focus on making your heavy attack do a ton of damage and then you use the fact that the default E for a gun blade fires two shots to build your combo chain to spam combo chain finisher, combo chain finisher, combo chain finisher, and you get a ton of damage out of it. I'll, I'll show you guys that on the Redeemer sometime, but we should be able to do that with the Strofa too if we can get it. Uh, hence why we're doing this. I want to get the Strofa, I want to put it on the noob account, and I want to see if we can make a very cheap, cost-effective, heavy attack build with it. And if we can, that will absolutely, like, it'll devastate bosses, guys. It does ridiculous amounts of damage. Right now, I use my Redeemer to hunt Eidolons. It's the most effective weapon I've found against the Eidolons, which is saying something in and of itself because the Eidolons do not suffer from statuses, and they have a ridiculous amount of armor, and just, they take a while to kill, basically. And with, uh, with the Redeemer, they don't take very long to kill at all. They go down very, very fast. Hey, what's up, Utico? Can we, uh, can we chit-chat here? Can we talk? What's up? Hi. Okay. I love that the Solaris have so many, like, slang words in their language. It's one of the most entertaining parts of the game to me. Wait, can I skip this? Okay, I guess not. I tried, guys. I tried. I really tried. I just want to get on to the next mission, but I guess we'll have to watch this. Uh, when you're going through, though, definitely take your time. Enjoy the story. I did think the story for the Deadlock Protocol is actually really, really good. I, I actually really... The story was probably my favorite part. I didn't love the new melee weapon. Uh, I thought the Strofa wasn't technically very good when it came out, but it's actually a lot better now than it was. Um, and Protea is cool, but... I, given stuff going on in life, Protea was not cool enough for me to rearrange my entire life to farm her, so there's that. Okay. God. Can we, can we continue, please? Can we maybe? No, I guess not. Okay. Sparky, okay. You find what Neff's looking for. You'll find out what happened to our people. Get on it. Gotcha. We're on it, Utica. We got this. Now we just leave Fortuna. Like, okay, so... <laughs> so the story is great, and if you're enjoying the story, that's fine. But if you've... I guess I haven't done it on this account, which makes sense why I had to watch it. Uh, hopefully, if you decide to, like, replay through it or whatever, you can just skip those. Although, I don't know why you'd actually replay through it, so forget that I said that, because it makes no sense. Uh, okay. Not the right thing. That's the right thing. It is nice that all of these missions take place on Venus. Uh, they could have easily put this on Jupiter or a higher-up planet in the star map, and then it would have kind of made it less accessible to new players. The main reason I'm having you guys push through this is because the Strofa feels like a very end-game weapon. And it seems to be obtainable very early, and if that's true, if we can manage to get the Strofa put together very early, then that could be a really, really strong weapon to carry you through all sorts of content. Like I said, considering that people are comparing it to the Redeemer, I feel like it's actually probably going to be really, really useful for Eidolon content when you get there as well. Uh, so it is sort of a, a shortcut to getting a really, really strong endgame weapon. Because with the Redeemer, you can build the regular Redeemer, but like I, I go with the Redeemer Prime. The thing is, putting together primes, like, I was actually going to do that for an episode of the New Player's Guide, but the problem is that putting together primes as a new player is actually really difficult, mainly because you don't have access to the nodes that will reward you with Axie Relics, and Axie Relics usually hold the rarest parts of a prime craft, so basically, without access to those, your only option is to push through the star map more or just not build very many primes. And that's okay, like, you, you don't need to feel bad about that or anything, but basically my hope here is that if we can get the Strofa here, 
it will be on par with the Redeemer Prime, which means that you won't need Primes. Get what I'm saying, guys? Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm waiting. Patching you into the system. Now we have to defend this. The good news is we're Volt. Ha ha ha. I love that. I love the fact that Volt Shock just like flatlines groups of MOAs and stuff. Like it doesn't take out one, it takes out the whole group. Okay. Some good damage there. Ow. I'm gonna be honest, I'm doing the wrong thing here. By going over there, I'm actually leaving the defense point exposed. Uh, I actually did this the first time I came through this on stream. I basically lost the point because I was busy exploring the new tile set. Here I'm gonna go ahead and use our shock because it'll take out like seven dudes. That's totally worth, totally worth the energy. Uh, okay, making sure everybody's hitting me, that's good. Hit me, not the point please. Thank you. Uh, put up a wall here for a sec. Fire through it. This is probably a bit long range for me to be using the heck at, I'm gonna be honest. But, hey, if it works, which it does seem to be doing. Oh, wow, that was nice. Although I am getting pretty low on health here. Okay. Time to jet a little bit. Time to jump around a little bit. Maybe roll a little bit. Keep our defenses up that way. And then come down and take these guys out once we've had a little time to get our shields back up. Never, ever feel like you can't jump around for a bit and just buy yourself time to get shields back up because that's a, a huge, huge part of surviving stuff like this in Warframe. Okay, that's it. Sorry guys, my bug uh, is itching. I thought I had like a bug crawling on me or something. Isn't that like, I don't know about you guys, but like I have a, a thing about spiders, right? So like whenever I feel something that feels like something's crawling on my leg, I'm like, oh God, is that a spider? Do I gotta deal with that right now? Thankfully it wasn't. Because if it was, you guys might have, like, had to cover your ears. I might have screeched like a small child and ran out of the room. I'm just kidding. I, I don't like spiders, but I'm not quite that bad. Uh, I am bad enough to where, like... Okay, so this is definitely off topic, but we're just kind of grinding this mission right now anyway. Uh, but I'm, I am bad enough to where, like, if I see a spider crawling on the ceiling and, like, I'm not able to... Oh, he got sucked into the hand. Um, anyways. And I'm not able to, like find it and take it outside or or squish it or whatever then like i can't sleep i'm just like always looking around i'm like where's it coming from man it's coming for me but i don't know where it's coming from which is why irrational fears are irrational because that doesn't make any sense right like i know that doesn't make any sense nobody has to tell me that okay all those guys are down maybe not okay he's trying to get us through bam everybody gets shocked Everybody was kung fu dying. That's basically what Warframe is. It's everybody kung fu dying. Get wrecked. All right. Easy dive on there. Take all of these guys out in one fell swoop. I'm not even sure, like, are we technically protecting that console? I guess we are. I guess we are. Here, let's do this. Let's put a wall up by the console then and see if we can fire through it. Man, I don't know why my aim is so bad. I think it's because of the... I'm, like, standing today at my desk instead of sitting. Okay, and I'm dead. Uh, this is bad. Let's try this. Everybody get fried. There we go. Everybody get fried. Okay, I gotta stop messing around. I was trying to figure out why my aim was... So, there, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. I think it was just the way that I was standing. I didn't have as much control over my mouse. Uh, like, I have a new mic set up, I have a new standing desk set up, and I'm still kind of getting accustomed to it. And it does create some difficulties. Uh, not as many as me ignoring the point, though. Everybody die. Okay, cool. That would have been so bad if we'd have lost it right there with so little left. I, I would have felt so, so bad, guys. Okay. There we go. Oh. Can I skip? No, I can't. It's the Granum Void, Utico. Get with the program. You should know this already. Okay. Give me an exit. There we go. 
200 meters with vol uh, <clears throat> sorry with volt speed means nowhere at all wow my throat is just the enemy today guys it's being the enemy today hold on this is uh this allergy season is killing me i'm telling you apologies for that everybody this allergy season is really really tearing me up lately uh, and i've tried like it's so weird because it seems like my allergies get worse every single year. Like, I've tried a bunch of different medications and stuff to try to make it better. And, like, we'll be waiting I've got friends that are like, at this point, I'm combining two different ones. And I'm like, does that really seem like a good idea to you? I don't know, man. I, I feel like maybe that's not necessarily the right way to go about that. I just take double the allergy pill. No, no, something seems bad about that. Uh, okay. Next part of the mission is to return to Fortuna. So we're going to have another story cutscene here, and then we will get sent out again. Uh, you will be awarded a melee weapon from this chain, too, which will help you build up your MR. It's called the Zorus. It's actually very, very useful and, frankly, necessary for us to get the Strofa. Now, that being said... Okay, necessary might be a strong word. Theoretically, you could just find a really, really good group, and they could carry you through getting the pieces to the Strofa if you wanted. But if you're doing it, like, and you're trying to be functional and contributing, then the Zorus is going to be a big help because basically what it'll do is the Gram, Granum Void mission things, they're, like, timed, and you have to get a certain number of kills in a certain amount of time. The Zorus allows you to extend that time by 20 seconds every time you do a certain thing. So basically, even as a low level, you can contribute by coming in there and doing the time extension part of the mechanic. And that's what we're going to be looking to do. We're going to get all our things and we're going to try to contribute by doing time extension and then just get the kills and hopefully get our strofa parts pretty easily and have a really, really solid sort of end gamey weapon. Okay. Okay, we're aware. It's crazy to me. I, I still feel like... And maybe I should have left Taxon back when I went and did the Jackal, but I feel like the Jackal is legitimately just time-based now. So, like, just when you do that, for, I guess from now on, just focus on the mechanics. Don't focus on doing damage. Because you don't really need to. Like, Taxon was doing enough damage to make it work. I could have just been blind-firing an assault rifle at him from different angles and would have gotten through to the different phases pretty easily, too. Uh, so I feel like they did a really good job with that because they did revitalize the fight. It is a lot more interesting now. Uh, but they also didn't do it in a way that, like, buries new players. Because there's already so much information in Warframe that you get buried under as a new player. That, like, you don't need a boss that's going to bury you too. That would have been very, very rough. But I feel like it's honestly more mechanically challenging than a lot of the content after it. So it's kind of funny in that way. Because it makes you wonder if they're trying to bring the standard of all the bosses up. Because if they are, then it's good that they did that because you're essentially training your players to do a more complex boss. Oh, are we going to get locked out here, or do we actually have this node? No, we have that node. Okay, so I thought maybe that that was a concern that I had for this mission chain. I was like, man, if it sends us over to Jupiter for one of the mission chain, we're just not going to be able to finish it there. Uh, but so far, that hasn't happened. So far, we've been able to do this. Uh, it does look like this is just the first node of Phobos, so really, really early on in the Phobos planet uh, map set. Map set. Star map. There we go. English, good. It's it's really, really not that tough. Uh, it can be, though. And, like, I don't know, guys. I feel like I'm a little just out of it because of the allergies. They're really, really messing with me today. Like, every couple of seconds, I kind of want to pause the, the recording and go, you know... Yeah. Yeah. Allergies suck. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so here's the treasure. This is teaching us how we do the treasure mechanic. Uh, we're going to see him spawn in, and we're going to wreck him for a coin, and then use that coin to jump into the, the Granum Void here. Hello, little treasurer. Where are you at, though? Uh, let's use Speed Boost so that we can get to him relatively quickly. Not going to worry too much about... Oh, ow. That was... I, I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming, and I was like, all right, I accept this. I'm going to dive straight into that laser wall, and it's not going to kill me, so there's that. All right. Keeping on, keeping on. We don't need to fight any of these guys. Ow. All we need to do is find this guy. The nice thing is we do have a massive charge right now, so if we just hit him with, like, anything, it's going to get a big, big electrical boost. Hey, hey, come here, you. There we go. Oh, that didn't do much after all. 
Hey, hey, guess what? I'm just gonna keep slashing you until you die like I did last time. Because that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, actually, this time it's not working very well. You can see we're hardly even getting through his shields or anything. Do I have the energy to do anything else? I really don't. Oof. This is getting rough. Come on, you. Time to die. At this point, I'm honestly just going for a high combo so that I can power attack him with melee and hope for the best. Uh, that did not do as much as I had hoped, and I'm down. Okay, that's not a big deal. We're gonna get back up, we're gonna reposition, we're gonna put up our wall, and then try firing through it. Well, I guess not. Uh, grab the wall and chase him. That seems better. Let's do this. Now, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that the bonus of hitting through the wall applies to your melee strikes if you're carrying the wall like this. Like I said, I can't say for sure, though. Ah, come back here, you. He's such a wiry little guy. Look at him running around. And it's those traps that, like, hold you down that are a real problem, too. I'm almost through his shields. Oh, my gosh. This is, this is, by the way, what I was expecting when we ran into the treasurer last time. I wonder if they made him scale for level a little bit more. And that's what we were seeing, because he's definitely a lot harder on this planet than he was when we ran into him on Venus. Oh, that makes sense, though. Like, he probably does scale for level because there is a different coin that gets dropped based on his level, I think. So, for this guy, we should be getting, like, the mid-level coin. All right, there we go. We went down a second time, but it's not unachievable. Got our Granum crown. Let's get out of here. Okay. Where's the tribute point? Give me the icon. I know that it was around here, but I can't remember where it was in all that confusion. There we go. 300 meters that way. Give me speed. Okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Straight through we go. I thought that was a tribute point back there, but I guess we have to go to this specific one for the quest, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Okay. Just walk up this. Tell it, I want you to take my Granum Crown. Yeah, so this is the base level Granum Crown. I'm not sure if you have to do the higher level ones to get the Strofa parts or not. So that could be another hang-up. All right. I don't have... Okay. We're just gonna listen to, uh... Parvos here. Yup. Okay. <laughs> Neff about to get checked, though. Okay. There's nothing we can do here except for listen to these guys talk. That being said, the story is really good, so... Like, it's weird, because I'm trying not to spoil it for you guys, so I'm kind of... I'm just going to talk over it a little bit. Uh, we're going to keep moving forward. And I believe that that is Protea right up there. Yes, it is. There she be. Protea Spectre, you heard her here first. No, I'm just kidding. Protea. That is why you have been invited here. All right, old guy. Father, permit me to show you all I have built okay. All right. There we go. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. You need to get wrecked now. Uh, see those specter particles right there? Those are going to be important, but before we can use them, we need to get the Zorus weapon. Uh, essentially, once you get the Zorus weapon, you come in here, you kill enemies, you use the Zorus to scoop those particles. When you get five of them, you can use them to free a Solaris from being trapped in like a bubble thing here and that is what extends your time by 20 seconds when you're doing the Grand and Void thing. If you don't do that I feel like it's not really possible to meet the uh, the kill requirements in those missions if you're not doing that at all. Because I went in with a Mesa and was just like clearing the, the entire map of enemies and we basically got about halfway there before we ran out of time and the main reason was was because we weren't increasing the time by using the Zorus. So... 
that's, yeah, that's kind of the problem. You want to be doing that. All right. Here we go. Can we get kicked out of here yet and go look for the Zorus? Can we do that? Because we're not going to be able to finish this right now. Okay. All right, Protea's back. Y'all heard it here first. Oh, I think we're going to get wrecked, guys. I think we're going to get wrecked. Okay, bye. It was nice meeting you. We're gone. Alright. Yeah, it's it's a trip we never took, guys. Protea woke up and she was like, rewind, and everything we did was over. Uh, but the logs apparently didn't get unwritten. Which is interesting, because it means that, like, what she did with time was kind of a localized thing. Like, it wasn't a I rewrote all of history thing as much as she just reversed the time flow surrounding us. Uh, which is cool from a metaphysical standpoint, just to, to think about and talk about or whatever. But, uh, there we go. We got through that, that's what matters. Let's get to the exit here. And now we're going to get the mission to acquire the blueprints to build the Zorus. Come on. Let's go. Out the door we go. Uh, I was trying to see if I had the energy to juice up there, but I did not. So I'm just going to slippity slide. Just going to keep on slippity sliding through the level. Uh, this is generally how I get around when I'm just playing on my own time. I usually just bullet jump everywhere. I don't use the, the roll that everybody else uses because it's faster, I guess. I, I just bullet jump everywhere, and it keeps me moving in a fluid fashion towards where I'm going. Uh, unless I get distracted, and then I bullet jump into a corner, and I'm just standing there for a few seconds. But, you know, it happens. It happens. Okay, so we're out of this one. What do we have left, and where are we at on time? Got a new mail. Vox <laughs> this seems like a good idea. No. No, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to work with you. Yup. Okay, Zorus, here we go. Uh, this is actually going to take us over to Europa, which I don't think I have unlocked. So that's intriguing. It's actually allowing me to go to planets that I don't have unlocked yet. Neff's given us a cipher for an old ground file. And that basically means that you guys should be able to do this. Like, as soon as the quest is available, you don't need to worry about what's unlocked and what's not. Okay, here we go. Speeding through, guys. Time to make that speed trip. Get to all the things. Alright, so we have three different spy points here. I think the point of this mission is to show you the uh, updates to the spy maps for this particular tile set. And they have done quite a few updates. They're pretty cool, though. Like, it still feels similar to what it was before, but there are definitely some new twists that make it more enjoyable, in my opinion. Okay, let's get through there. So let's see which ones it gives us here. Uh, if you recognize this one, normally... Okay, well, first we're going to deal with all these guys. Guess what? Everybody dies. Everybody dies. Thank you. Okay, so normally with this one, you would go through that vent right there and continue on forward, but uh, in this instance, that's not going to be the case. Now, what I'm not sure about is if there's... Oh, I think there is. Well, that wasn't what I was trying to do for sure. You basically don't want to get pegged by the cameras here, but uh, I think that there is a way up the center right there. Well, I got caught. Okay. It looks like there is not a way up the center right here. So that's good to know. Let's jet. Come on, bring that down. So I guess in this instance, we were just supposed to kind of sneak our way around. Uh, this is fine. This, by the way, is why it's sometimes good to have some ciphers on ready. But we'll see if I can make this. Oh, I was one second away, guys. One spin away. 
Okay, so we got nailed. <laughs> I I'm not opposed to this. They did change these, like I said, so whatever you might think you're used to is probably not correct anymore for these spy missions. Man, that was like... So close though, so like half a second away. I should really build ciphers, I just have like a thing against using them, like it feels like cheating to me, so I always do the, the hacks manually, but it's really not a bad idea, especially for spy missions. Uh, in that instance, I paid the price for being picky and didn't get the completion there. It was literally one spin away though, like I spun one thing the wrong way and it cost me there. Sad, sad times y'all, sad, sad times. We're gonna head straight back to A though this time. We're still gonna just jet through everything. I'm not gonna stick around and, and play games, dodging cameras and things like that, because there's really no need for it. Uh, the main thing we do wanna be cognizant of is that lasers get turned on if you run through cameras. So I gotta, I gotta watch out for that. But everything other than that really isn't that big of a deal. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the alarms off right here though to buy us a little bit of extra breathing room. Okay, alarms are off. Uh, these guys are all gonna die here real quick. There we go, everybody's dead. And then on to point A. Uh, so if this is the same point, at least we've learned that going up top there doesn't really do anything. So instead we're gonna go through the side here, we're gonna walk up and execute this guy. Seems good. Uh, this one for the most part I think is... Oh, that's That like spooked me for a minute, I was like, oh man, what are you doing to me now? Uh, so this one really does feel like it's primarily just about avoiding the cameras. Which really shouldn't be that hard. We'll just go under the camera here. Uh, and then around the camera here. Now we just have to wait for this to come down. I'm gonna kill him off real quick. Uh, there is a broken grate here, so we're gonna hit that and see where it takes us. How did they... Okay. They made us. I don't know how they made us, but they made us. So here we are again, same situation. Only this time we were much closer to the point when it triggered. Can you just die and leave me alone here so I can do this? Okay, perfect. There we go, we got it. So now that we got it, I do kind of want to decompress, or not decompress, but de... Construct. Deconstruct. That was the word I'm looking for. I want to deconstruct the way that this puzzle works so that we can kind of find an easier way to do it next time. Okay, so that will drop us right here. And this will take us out right there. Oh, okay. So what we needed to do was come through here. And then right there is a way up. And that takes you into this room. There also look to be pathways from the side. Let's see if we can find those and where they go. All right, so this one will drop us out where? Right here, which is covered, so obviously we can't take it. I think this is the pathway that used to work, and now it's gone. Um, same thing would, I imagine, be over there. So the real pathway in now, if you're trying to, to be all tacky about it, is through this. Is there something up here, though? No. Okay, I just wanted to check, just in case. Uh, so it's through this, which is part of this back access hallway thing, that is access through here. So either way, we found our way out now, that's what matters. Uh, we got the, the stuff we came for on to B and C. As you can see though, these are different now, so definitely don't go in with the same predispositions you had to the former tile set, because if you do, you're likely to fail these. Uh, that's basically what I was doing. I was like, there's a trick to get into here, and really all I needed to do was just be sneaky and go around the back there and open it properly, and that would have been fine. Uh, so that one was the simple one, I'm assuming, because that does seem like it actually got easier than the original form. Which means these next ones shouldn't be quite so simple. Okay. Uh, is this the laser wall? It is the laser wall. Alright. So this one is looking a lot more similar than it did last time. Okay. Last time I wasn't fortunate enough to get out through this. Ah. So that's covered up now. Uh, so these alcoves have gotten a lot bigger, I feel like. And I still don't... Yeah, the laser walls don't come in here. The alcoves have gotten a lot bigger, so it's honestly a little bit more forgiving than it was in the past. Now for this one, 
I think this is very much the same as it used to be, which is we can just go through here, come up, find our way actually out of the up position, and right here into the room where the hacking needs to happen. Just drop down there. Finito. Okay. So that one stayed relatively the same, but they did upgrade the graphics and they made those alcoves a little bit bigger. So that one should actually be a little bit easier, to be 100% honest. Uh, and just so everybody knows, they did leave the switch in to turn the lasers off. I believe that's right in here now. I could be wrong about that, though. I've never actually tried switching the lasers off since they updated it. I always just go around. Hello there. Let's, let's skip all these guys and go straight for our exit. Or not our exit, but our uh, third point. Let's go. Straight across. This new tile set is really, really nice, though. I'm actually a huge fan of the new tile set. I like the new aesthetic. I think they've added a lot of depth to the corpus lore, which is really nice. Uh, and honestly, the, the new characters they introduced are great, and I'm, I'm really enjoying their interactions with the pre-existing characters before Deadlock Protocol. Uh, that being said, we're not going to go through the middle of that thing, because it will kill us, I'm reasonably sure, if it even lets us through it. I went through the middle of one of those things that just died instantly and was like, okay, that was a bad idea. Okay, they're going to probably follow us in here, so we will have to turn around and kill some dudes. Nope. Ah, this one. Okay, so this one, in the old days, before the update, there was a, a thing in the wall right there you could go through and it would wrap you around. That's gone now. No more easiness with that. Uh, there are some side vents right here, but they're not really comparable in my experience. Yeah, they just kind of bring you back out in here. Uh, they don't really help you get up any higher and thus closer to where you're going. Oh, but that worked. And I mean, honestly, that worked as well. So let's see if we can just... Yup! And that didn't work. But that's okay. For this one, you can honestly just fall through. So it worked pretty well right up until it didn't. And now we just need to hack this, and we should be out of here. There we go, and we're done. Beautiful. Okay, so we got all three parts of the Zorus now, and we just need to head to the exit. That should allow us to construct the Zorus, and I think what we'll do, based on the time right now, is we'll finish this off on the next episode, because the Protea fight is something else, guys. The Protea fight is very, very difficult. Uh, it can take a little bit of time, especially... I would imagine, considering how low level we are, it'll probably take a good bit of time. Because I struggled with it on my main account, and that was, you know, I had really good gear on a really good frame, and I still struggled with it pretty bad. And that's because it's mainly just an endurance fight. That being said, I think we'll be fine with Rhino, especially if we do something like we bring uh, Energy Siphon along on him. That'll help us to keep our Iron Skin up, and that'll make that fight a little bit easier. There we go. Out with Vor, we're going to start our Zorus, and that'll be it for this one. Why did I say out with Vor? Out with Volt. Sorry, guys. It, it's been a long, long week, and my brain is all garbled. It's also really, really hot right now, and, like, I don't have the AC on because I don't want the AC in the background of the audio because that's just murder on your audio. Um, okay. Come over here. Zorus time. There we go. Uh, and for the Strofa, we're going to need four parts, which we'll get from doing those Granum Voids. Look at that, though. That thing just looks cool, too. But honestly, the, the Gun Blades guys are ridiculously powerful for heavy attack builds. Like, it's, it's insane how much damage they can do. And the best part is that heavy attack builds don't require, like, a ton of really overpowered, like, rare mods. They actually just require a bunch of kind of, like, cheap, easy-to-get mods. Uh, like one of them, and I'm actually going to point this out to you guys now because you should definitely be grinding it if you're not. Uh, but the Zorus is finished. Cool. So we can claim it now. And we're out of weapon slots. So we can sell a weapon to make a new slot. That's perfectly fine. Let me go take a look at our inventory and see what we're holding. Because there's a very good chance we're holding a Mark 1 something like that. Yep. Mark 1 Kunai. Bye bye Anything that says Mark 1, you can pretty much sell. Uh, it's not going to be used to build anything else. Okay, give me my Zorus. So now we have the Zorus, which is a ring weapon. You may not have used one of those yet. That's okay. Uh, they're actually just kind of functionally annoying. But, <laughs> at least in my opinion, I don't like the ring weapons very much. I really don't. Uh, that being said, if you guys are planning on working on the Strofa and you want to have a really, really powerful gunblade, then you need to get up to these Amalgam mods here. 
the amalgam mods here, I believe it's the organ shatter or the barrel diffusion, one of them actually increases your... Actually, I wonder if we can look at that. I wonder if it shows up in your mods even if you don't have it. No, I think you can only see mods that you own, right? Uh, so anyways, one of those amalgam mods will actually increase the damage of your heavy attack, which works really, really well with the Gunblade heavy attack build. Uh, and I believe it also increases multi-shot, so it might be the uh, Barrel Diffusion. I can't say for sure off the top of my head. It's either the Organ Shatter or the Barrel Diffusion, but you'll want that. And to get it, you need to do 50 of those Fracture Seals in Orvalis, so you should do that if you're planning on getting the Strofa. That's going to be it for this one. I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!